we'll post it on we'll post this on YouTube. So I share the link with you guys later. Okay. Uh, like I said, this is only an exceptional measure because of the travel this week um, in Texas right now. So probably going to do this online thing for about uh, uh, three lectures. And uh, before you know, I return on Monday and you see my face again. Uh, if you miss me so much, you can email me. We can set up one-on-one -on -one meetings as before. If you have any questions, I can always take it uh, through phone chat or Zoom or something like that, okay? All right, so that being said, uh, quickly announcement about the first exam. <clears throat> we'll be over uh, finishing over the content for first exam a little bit uh, early next week. I think we'll finish most of the things this week, but have some leftover probably catch up next Monday or Wednesday. Uh, so most likely we'll be ready uh, for the exam, uh, you know, while a little bit before the spring uh, fall break. And then we'll probably have the exam right after the fall break. So if that's the case, and again, like I said, I like to put the exam usually on Thursday because that's where we have the most time available. And that means uh, we're gonna have our exam roughly, let's say that uh, October the 7th, October the 7th. Uh, that's a little bit late than what I wanted, uh, but that's unfortunately the case, October the 7th. <clears throat> so I just wanna check with everybody, okay? Uh, so I had to mute you. If you forgot to unmute yourself, please do so while you join. So we won't, you know, competing for the mics. And now uh, let, let me see if we're okay here. So anybody have any potential conflict uh, with exam set on October the 7th afternoon, the same lecture hours? Anybody have any conflict? You can simply raise your hand and see a chat message or here already. <clears throat> hey, nice and morning to you as well. Thank you. Any problem with first exam set on October the 7th? That is a Thursday afternoon. We'll probably start from one o'clock as the lecture time. Career fair day. No, uh, career fair day. Um, we will not have uh, lectures on Wednesday. What we'll do is that I will record a video for you guys to watch for the career Wednesday, okay? <clears throat> All right, so I'm talking about October 7th, okay? October 7th going once, 7th going twice, no objections, any objections? October 7th going third time, so okay. So we all agreed on first exam, October the 7th, okay? Now, depends on how long we run into the content for the second exam. We might add a little bit shear into the first exam just because we have to push it to October 7th. Originally, I thought we could do it like next week, but you guys have career and we have fall break. Uh, so we have to do it October 7th, okay? But if we add anything from shear or one-way slap, it's gonna be a very small portion of it. So I wouldn't worry too much. Mostly the first exam is still gonna be test you guys on the flexure, okay? On the flexure. Okay, so we're good. So let me just say it again, uh, uh, you know, forgive me if I'm nagging, but the first exam set on October 7th, uh, Thursday afternoon, okay? Thursday afternoon. Would there be any old ex exam, uh, expel test? You mean example test, uh, study guides? We'll send you some old exams <clears throat> by sharing it during a review session. What I will do is that I will, share that exam on the review, uh, big screen and everything. That's probably gonna happen either next week or the week after next, after for break, okay? All right, so um, let's uh, start right now and then we can talk about more about the exam once the lecture is over. You can reach out to me as well if you have any concern question about it, okay? All right, so let me share my screen and pick up where we left at, okay? So where we have here, <coughs> Share my screen. All right, so we left at the section detail from last lecture. Okay, so last lecture here, this is the section detail, right? It's a crazy drawing, we all know it, but uh, we have finished one thing that is very promising, which is about the minimum beam width for the section. All right, and you all know that. The reason why we have to have a minimum beam width is we need to fit bars into row in this width. Right, so all you need to consider are basically 
three things. One thing is at the corner, <clears throat> you have a clear cover right here. And then you also have a bending uh, radius from the stirrups and also stirrup itself, diameter of stirrup itself. And also you have to consider lining up the bottom bars, corner bars, the center of that lining up with the contact, which is tangential point right here. Then you calculate the distance. Then the second thing you need to consider is the spacing. When I say spacing is a clear spacing, okay? Clear spacing between the bars. When I say clear spacing, that's from edge to edge of the bars, okay? And you figure that spacing out by the equation we showed you guys last time. Then you add on the diameter of the bars. You then have the half of the minimum beam width, okay? So here, all the equation, actually, this is the most equation we use to calculate the beam width, right? Most important equation we use to calculate beam width. So this is half. And the sneaky part is that we have a gap between the edge of the stirrups and the edge of the bars, and we call it S hat. <clears throat> and how to calculate S hat? It is actually very important to get the beam width, okay? So once we have that, right, you can always check in table A5, table A5, and then this is in a textbook, table A5, okay? If you don't have the textbook, I will do a screenshot of that table A5 and post it on Canvas, okay? So there you can find the minimum beam width just by counting the bar, just by counting the bar, okay? So that's something that we can do as well. So in the exam, you may ask, Bob, now there are two ways seems to be. One is that this complicated the way you showed that how to calculate. And the other way is just looking up to the table. So which way we took? You took both, you took both. You calculate the beam width and then double check with the textbook to see that if your calculate number is smaller than the textbook or not. Now, theoretically, your calculate number should be equal or smaller than the textbook value, all right? If your number is bigger than the textbook value, I suggest you look over your calculation to find out what's the reason for it, okay? That is for insurance purpose, basically, all right? <clears throat> so that's what we talked about last time. Now, let me quickly do a redraw so clear up a lot of clumsy drawing here. So essentially what we did last time is that we have a section, we have a section, we have two bars here. Let's see what I have, number eight bars here. So let's draw number two A bars, two number eight bars here, here. And we have two, three number nine bars, I believe in the bar. Uh, this is disproportional, hey, disproportional, draw a little bit bigger. <clears throat> and to help, that. Let me just move this up a little bit. So two, three number nine bars, slightly bigger. Okay, three number nine bars. In the bottom row, in the bottom row, and we have stirrups. We have stirrups that are going through sidewise here. Okay, like that. All right. Now also have a bending radius at the corner and thickness of the bars. You see that I'm clumsy already. I'm already squeezing things in, but no, that's what our section looks like. We have already determined the minimum beam width from last lecture. This is done, okay? So two things we need to consider. One is beam width, so we can select the section size. And the other is depths of the bars, depths of the bars. So how do we determine the depths of bars, right? Last time I left it with a quiz. <clears throat> last time I left it with a quiz. All right, now you see this, this is only the bottom section, bottom section of the cross section, is that right? So what we need to find out when we're trying to find a depth of bars is actually where is actually the center of the group of the bars, center of the group of bars. And for the convenience of the calculation, we usually refer the center of the group of bars with respect to the bottom line here, to the bottom fiber here we call it y bar. To find y bar, we need to actually do the calculation like this. So we use sigma ai, yi divided by sigma ai. <clears throat> sigma ai, yi divided by sigma ai. Now what is sigma ai, right? So this fellow right here, right? ai is area, so area of bars. <clears throat> in each row, in each row. So how many rows I have, right? I have first row right here, 
say two number eight bars, first layer, and then I have a second layer right here, three number nine bars. So I have two layers, right? So now I have basically A1 and A2. <clears throat> there are more layers, you have more AIs, right? Then how about YI, the distance? Of course, I have two, so distance of center of bars between actually, right? So distance, sorry, between center of bars in each row to the bottom surface of concrete. Okay, to bottom. So that is to say that Y1 is the distance right here <clears throat> and Y2 is the distance right here. Okay, so these are the distance. These are the distance. All right, so once I have that, right, I can start doing my calculation. And again, as a civil engineer, I want to do table. I love doing tables because it makes things much easier, right? So I'm gonna switch a different color and start to build my table up. So you can see this table again, again, again. So this is basically my AI area of the bars, and this is my distance YI, right? A tiny table would help me. So this is a number of layer. <clears throat> So this is the first layer, right? So now AI is what? How many bars I have in the first layer? I have one number eight, two number eight, so two number eight. Now each bar I have how many? Uh, each, each number eight has an area of what? So number eight, just put a mark here. So that is two multiplied 0 0.79 inch square. That is how much area I have. And you know, if you run a quick calculation, this is 1.58 inch squared. All right, okay, 1.58 inch squared. All right, so the second layer, <clears throat> I have three number nine bars, right? So this is multiplied by two, this is multiplied by three. All right, so that is easy because number nine is one inch squared in the area. So I got three inch squared. Pretty straightforward, right? Pretty straightforward. Now, distance, yi, it's a little bit cumbersome, right? A little bit cumbersome. So let's take a look at it. Now, second layer is easiest, right? That's easy. So I'm gonna start with the second layer, right? So for the second layer, I need to take a look what we have here. So I have a clear cover, clear cover. This is say 1.5 inch, right? But now from last night, when we checked the table, we said this is better to be two inches. It's to be two inches, right? So I have now, this is two inch plus, now I have a stirrups right here, DS. And for DS, what I have, I have three, number three bars. So this is three A's. Are you calculating Y2 in this case? I'm sorry again? Are you calculating Y2 in this case? Oh, sorry, you're right. Let me just move this downstairs. Sorry about that. You're right, this is Y2. Thank you for a correction, okay? All right, so this is two plus three A's, and then I have to consider half of DB, which is number nine bars, so I have half inch. No, I actually have half of number nine over eighth of an inch. <clears throat> All right, so that is the distance I have. So with this, I can calculate the distance of Y2, okay, Y2. So I got a number, and can you guys quickly help me check on this number? I got a number of 2.95 inch. Can I get a second on this? I always mess up some numbers when I do this, clumsy hand and all. So I wanna get a confirmation. Do you guys get the same number from your quiz? Anybody? Actual credits, anybody? Yeah, 2.94. 2.94. How I somebody got else? 2.94. Got 2.94, oh, let's do the correction. So 2.94, that's correct actually. Okay, 2.94 inch, great. All right, so I see a chat. 
2.9375. Yes, Evans, that's excellent. By the way, I like your profile. Okay, looks like you're inspecting a bridge and all that. <laughs> Hopefully, they pay you well. <laughs> all right. So that's Y2. How about Y1? Right. So I got 2.94 inch of Y2. Okay. So let me just before I forgot, let me just label clearly 2.94 inch. <clears throat> okay. So Y1 is what? Let's start counting. Right. Now I have 2.94 already. So I start building my Y1 from ground up, right? So I have this portion of 2.94. So I'm just gonna label here. So I start building distance from here. So 2.94, this basic Y1, Y2, okay? It's a starting point. Then let's add on the distance. So from this black line right here, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going to the edge of the bar right here. And this is half of dB, so plus half of nine over eight. Okay, all right, so that is the, the other half of the second layer of the bars. Then I go up, I see a clear spacing between the edge of the bars. I'm still right now, I'm edge of the top edge of the number line layers and go all the way up to the bottom surface of the top layer. Now, this is clear distance, okay, clear spacing. I'm gonna use one inch, use one inch, all right? So with that, I wanna keep going, right? And now I have another bar size right here. And that is number eight, but I have half of that. I have half that. So I have half of number eight. Number eight bar has a diameter of one inch, right? You all know that, okay? So I can calculate this number. Now again, I may have made a mistake. I may have made a mistake, but I got this number to be 4.55 inch. Can somebody help me check on this? 4.55 inch. <clears throat> no, sorry. Five, eh, eh, eh. Made a mistake again. I think it's 5.0 inch. That's what I got. You got, okay. I got a second. I got Jordan, five inch. Anybody else? Anybody else? I got five inches as well. Good, good well. deal. Okay, let's work on it. All right, so I got five and 2.94 inch, okay? So then I wanna calculate my white bar, okay? I gotta calculate my white bar. So A1 multiplied by Y1 plus A2 multiplied by Y2 divided by A1 plus A2, right? Simple as that. Top here, right, I wanna bring a number in. So I got three, okay, three inch squared, Oh, A1, no, 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 no. Messed up with one, one and two, okay. A1 is what? 1.58 inch, okay, squared, right here, folks. And Y1, five inch, <clears throat> plus three inch, multiplied by 2.94 inch, and divided by 1.58, plus three, bracket outside inch squared, okay? All right, so I, Need to check on my number, but what do you guys got here? Anybody? Anyone? I got 3.65, 3.65. So do I get a third? Do I get a third? Third. Yeah, okay, good deal. That's the same number as I got. Perfect. Okay, so now that is 3.65 inch. So what does it mean? What does it mean? It means that, again, let me just copy the section here, right? So look, uh, well, let me use black color. It means that all these bars, right? All these bars have a 3.65 inch distance. Center of all these bars has a 3.65 inch distance from bottom surface of the concrete here. All right, and now I say, if, <clears throat> if the height, which is H of the section, right? Yes, 24 inch, just making things up, okay? What would be the DS in this case? So what is DS? H minus Y bar. So I got 24 minus 3.65. So what do I got? I got a 20.35 inch. Do I get a second on this number? Yep. 
All right. So how about dt? Well, that's h minus y2 or y1. I'm going to call names. Jordan, y2 or y1? Is it this number or this number? When I say dt? Uh, y2. Y2, right? So I got to keep on my Y2. So 24 minus Y2. What is Y2 again? Let me check my number. Y2, the second layer. So 2.94. What you got, by the way, Jordan? Can you do a quick calculation? Tell me about this number. <clears throat> you say 21.06. That's correct. That's beautiful. Okay. So this is what I got in terms of section height. All right, quick clarification. Now we got in the depth of the beam. So if I want to calculate MN here, and this has got to be something tension multiply D minus half A. Is that right? D minus half. I'm going to start calling names. Emily, Craig, Emily. Emily, Craig, are you there? Yep. OK, so can I ask you a quick, quick question here? So which one should I use, D here, DS or DT? Yeah. Trying to find ds. There you go. Perfect. Okay. Now, if I want to calculate the phi, <clears throat> which is a function, when I write this phi is a function of strain in epsilon t, I need to calculate epsilon t, and there's a d minus c divided by c multiply epsilon cu, where epsilon cu is 0 0.003. So my question is, and this is for a second, Emily. Emily Collins? Collins? Are you there? Yes. So which one should I use, DS or DT? DT. DT, there you go, thank you, okay? So mind you that, this is what the triangle looks like. Okay, this is epsilon CU, this is actual compressible C, and that's it. And by the way, this is 0 0.03. All right, so you see, this is not too difficult. This is not too difficult. Anything you do with a section, always check two things. So quick summary, right? Section details, right? Quick summary. Section details are about two things. Well, matter of fact, there's three things, but this spacing, <clears throat> ah, sorry, I might have to erase a little bit, okay? This bar spacing, all right? or concrete cover, they're already embedded into the minimum beam width and also the DS and DT section height. So when I ask you about section details, I'm asking you three sub questions, right? And you really have to know number one first to get number two. And then after number one, number two is set, number three is easiest, okay? All right. We're done with section details. Any questions so far? Are we good here? Any questions? If you haven't done your quiz, please do that. I don't know if the deadline's passed already. If deadline's passed, please check your number with what we have done right now and to make corrections and on your understanding, okay? All right. So I think we're good on the section details, okay? So we're going to march on to lecture number seven. So let me start a new lecture. <clears throat> okay, so lecture number seven. So what is lecture number seven today, folks? We're going to show you how to do design. Now, finally, we're ready for design. Okay, so lecture seven. <clears throat> design for, it's a design, right? But there's a lot of constraint because we cannot do complex, complex problem yet. So designed for a singly reinforced section, okay? And if I have to say this is two parts, so this will be 7.1, two parts, right? First part, it designed for a single reinforced section for a known <coughs> section geometry. So, Reinforced concrete, reinforced concrete. There are two parts, the concrete and the steel. So if we have a known section of geometry, it means the beam, well, we always use rectangular as the easiest one, right? Has a width that is set and H is set, right? The only unknown is what? The only unknown is the reinforcement. 
So essentially what we're doing here is we're trying to find out how much reinforcement I need to provide. I need to provide, okay? And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the easiest design question, easiest design question, all right? So today we're going to show you how we design the question. Now, I have posted old lecture note six, and you can see that's a mess, right? It's a mess. And the reason why it was a mess that we went through methodology first, you know, trying to get the logic behind it, then see in an example, show you an example. But I felt that's a little bit indirect and a lot of students got lost in the way. So today we're going to show you the other way around, flip it. So I'm going to show an example first. So 7.1 example design. Design a singular reinforced section. And the problem is straightforward. I have a beam that is simply supported. Simply supported, okay? So this is simply supported. Now with this simply supported beam, I have a distributed load. Distributed load. Okay? I don't know how much I have, but this is distributed load. So when I write omega u that you know that contain two parts, 1.2 omega dead plus 1.6 omega live. <clears throat> All right. And then I say that I want to draw a moment diagram. And this you would do in the exam as well, show you the moment diagram. And now I have a positive moment diagram because everything is going downwards, right? Now in the homework, and by the way, I'm halfway through the homework number one. I finished grading for the rest of uh, homework number one today, and you see your grade. I saw several of you guys shade the moment diagram. Some people shade it nicely like that, right? Some people shade it nicely like this, straight. And some people don't shade them at all. Either way is fine, but please don't shade it like this. Okay, please don't shade it like this. I see this in the exam, I will automatically assume you just scratch your drawing, meaning this is invalid. You null it, you're right? You nullify it. Then I have to take it, you don't understand what you're doing, right? So please don't, you know, hand waving and the shade like that because it causes confusions, okay? Especially in the blueprint, whenever you do a hand drawing later, okay? It's gonna cause complications, all right? So this is moment <clears throat> diagram. And again, oh, misspell, sorry. Moment diagram. No, I don't know the number, right? I don't know the number because I don't know the low, specific low. But, you know, for the sake of simplicity for our lecture, I say the max moment is definitely happening in the mid-span, and that is MU. And I tell you already, it's 145 kip foot. So all I have to do is design for it. Design for it. Okay. And due to several reasons, my section has been constrained has been constrained, meaning I cannot build bigger than that. So the maximum size I can have allowed is width is 12 inch and the height is what? Height is H equal to 24 inch. Fixed section, fixed section. And materials F prime C, 4 KSI concrete, 4, price, uh, 4, uh, 4 KSI concrete, and the yield strength grade 60, or 60 KSI, okay? And in the exam, I will always use grade 60, grade 75, okay? So test you a little bit on this. So the idea of this is to ask you, <clears throat> design for reinforcement, okay? Meaning I have bars and I'm just drawing them in two bars, right? That might be very confusing, right? So I'm just gonna use a one bar as illustration one bar is illustrated. I don't know, right? I don't know how many bars, what is the arrangement, anything. I just say there's symbolic bars there. I don't know how much, but what is my required area still at, you know, in terms of bars, bar size and number of bars. So let me just say bar arrangement and spacing, right? So specifically, these are three questions, right? Size, bar size, number of bars and spacing. Of course, when I say spacing, spacing between bars and concrete cover as well, right? All these question marks. <clears throat> We're going to design that. And after all this, right? When we say this implicitly, implicitly, which means we're already asking you and you don't know it, 
is that to check the minimum beam width after you design for it, does that fit? And also the minimum reinforcement to satisfy that requirement from ACI. If you can't remember, let me just show you. This is the equation for that. And as you can see, I already got most of the things memorized. So please memorize them. So this here, folks, is DS, okay? This here, folks, is DS, okay? And BW, if you're wondering about, I haven't seen this equation before. You did, but you forgot. BW is, for rectangular section, BW is B. For an I section or T section, BW is the flange, which is the narrowest size. Okay, just remind us again, which is the narrowest size of the section. Okay, so these are the four questions. Okay, these are the four questions. What I'm trying to say is that in the exam, right? In the exam, don't panic. In the exam, I may not tell you anything. These blue box thing, in the exam, I may not. I may not even show that. I'll ask you in the exam, just say design four, <laughs> design four, okay? That's how bad I can get, but you should know it from the lecture notes. When I ask you for design, I'm asking all these questions. How much area total needed? What is my bar arrangement? What is the beam width? What is the minimum reinforcement? And is your design satisfying all these requirements or not? All right? <clears throat> okay, so this is our problem. This is our real world problem. How do I design it? So before I do anything, I say solve or design, whichever way you please, just indicating you start working on the problem. I know where to start looking for grading. Okay, so what is first step? Look at this complicated problem. What is first step? Where are we gonna start? I'm gonna ask for any volunteers, give you a minute to think about it. Where we start? Where do we start? Okay, a quick reminder, we have AS, that is area required. We have moment, which is the moment applied to the beam. So where do we start? Anyone, anything? Any volunteers? Oh, this is juicy extra credits we're looking for here. Anyone? Uh, you can figure out the number of bars you wanna use. How, how do I figure out the number of bars? How do I figure out the number of bars, Nathan? Uh, start with start working with your uh, beam your... width. Is that right? Detailing. Is that right? Is that what you mean, Nathan? Sort of. Sort of. Okay, that's one option. So I guess one option start with the bar size. Yeah, I can start that, but I may run into trial and error. What if I start with detailing, see how many bars can fit in, but come out, my capacity is much larger than the design, all right? So that may be a little bit long way or long journey to take, but that is a valid choice, valid choice, all right? So I thought about it, you know, I think that's a good point to start, but how about this? From equation, what is our design philosophy? Nathan, you still getting actual credit, okay? Thank you for volunteering. So what is design philosophy? Our design philosophy is a phi mn, which is design, all right, has to be greater than or equal to the applied moment, isn't it? Isn't it? So that is our design philosophy, okay? With that, I started to think, you know what, if I just plug in every number here. So phi, I don't know, let's just put some number here. You know, I'm just gonna put 0.9 to start with. I don't know if it's 0.9 or not, I don't know. But you know, for the convenience of it, let me just put 0.9 there, right? And MN, what is MN anyway? <clears throat> MN is what? The tension of the section, which is ASFY, right? Multiply the lever arm. What is lever arm? So DS minus half A. Right? What if I just put all these numbers here and let's say that that has to be greater than or equal to the MU, which is applied moment. So when I start doing that, when I start doing that, that is right explicitly. So phi ASFY 
ds minus half a has to be greater than or equal to mu. So if I'm asking for reinforcement, folks, if I'm asking for reinforcement, right? So that is to say that as moving everything rest of it to the right hand side has to be greater than or equal to mu divided by phi of y ds minus half a. <clears throat> right? So that is where we start. That is where we start. Okay, that is where we start. All right, so this is a nice place to start, right? So I can start thinking about plugging the numbers, right? So what is MU here? Well, I told you guys it's 145 kip foot. Nice and handy. So what about phi, strength reduction factor? I don't know that. I have no idea. But you know, I'm being a little bit lazy, guys. And you know what? I can approximate it to be safe, but play around 0.9. And if later I find out it is not 0.9, I can always change that, can I? So that is set. Fy, well, I know that for sure. Fy, you know, instead of approximation, it is hard equal 60 KSI, right? Now the rest of it is ds minus half a. All right, ds minus half a. So can I get a second brave warrior asking me, what we're gonna do about ds minus half a? Do we know a? Do we know A? I'm just gonna start blindly calling your name here, okay? Do we know A, Evan? Evan, Mr. Collins, are you there? Uh, yes, that's okay. the grade of the steel, which in this case is 60 KSI. Well, that's FY, right? What I'm asking is DS minus half A. Do we know DS minus half A? Do we have any information on that? Uh, if we... Uh... If we can calculate y bar, we can get ds. If we can calculate y bar. And to calculate y bar, we need to know the bar arrangement, isn't it? Yes. Do we know the bar arrangement? Do we know the bar arrangement? We, we were asking it, right? Yes. So we don't, isn't it? Uh, we don't. We don't. <laughs> That's good, right? So it's not a true question. The answer is unknown. And thanks, Evan. You're getting the credit for it, okay? I know, so we don't know. That's a good thing, right? We don't know, that's a good thing. Why that is a good thing? When we don't know in, at this point, ACI says, look, you guys don't know that at the beginning, but can you approximate? Sure we can. So what we do here is we approximate that to be 90% of the depth DS. 90% <clears throat> of the depth DS. Okay, now let's follow in the line of trait of thought. Now we don't know ds minus half a because we don't know ds and we don't know half a, we don't know anything. And you say, Bob, approximate it to 0.9 ds. Now the question is, we don't even know ds. How do we approximate ds? Now, ACI says, it's a lot of play the game of ACI says, right? ACI says, if you have one row of bars, <clears throat> one layer, that is one layer, you can approximate a ds equal to h, which is section height, minus 2.5 inch. Don't ask me why, they just do that. If you have two layers, okay, and ds, this is two layers, ds approximated with h minus 3.5 inch, just like that, just like that. <clears throat> All right, so, it's a lot of approximation. So after approximation, let me rewrite the equation. You see it, right? So basically, ACI says, you need a reinforcement that is greater than or equal to MU, okay? I start plug all the approximation sign here, okay? Pay attention, 0 0.9 to approximate phi, and Fy, that is given, which is fine, and ds minus half a, I don't know anything about it, so it's minus, so multiply 0 0.9 of H, if it's one row, let's assume one row. So here, let me write, assume one row, or one layer, one layer of bars, right? And this is H minus what? 2.5. And that is the equation we're gonna use. That is the equation we're gonna use, okay? So with that approximation, ACI says, and this is, this is an ACI code, okay? in the flexure, I will show you the code number later, but this is AS and has to be greater than equal to, uh, greater than or equal to MU, 145 kip foot. 
because I want this to be inch squared. I want to convert this to inch squared. So 12 inch per foot conversion and a thousand pounds per kip conversion. Okay, and draw the line here, draw the line here. Okay, and divided by 0 0.9, which is a proxy number and FY 60 KSI. So conversion is thousand PSI, right? And then multiply 0 0.9, this is this value right here. And H is 24, H is 24. <clears throat> so DS is 24, this is approximate, okay? Minus 2.5, so I got 21.5 inch. So I got 21.5 inch. And that is how I approximate the reinforcement. High approximate reinforcement. And with this, I say, oh, yes, now has to be greater than or equal to 1.6 to 67 inch squared. All right, okay. All right, now this is a very rough, very rough estimation. We made so many assumptions, whole bunch of, threw out a lot of things. We said, we don't know a DS minus half A, so we made approximate DS. We don't know the strength reduction factor, we're processing to be 0.9. All these need to be checked. All these need to be checked. So the second step, let's check it. So when we say we don't know DS minus half A, we approximate that. But most important thing is that we approximate A. So we need to check A. Now A equal to what? A equal to what? So how do we get A? We have to use compression from a concrete equal to tension of the bars. So the compression is, is equal to 0 0.85 F prime C and A, which is the effective compressive zone A equal to B to one C, remember? And B, which is the width of the section, and that has to equal to tension force, which is ASFY, ASFY, is that right? So from this equation, A would equal to what? ASFY simply divided by a 0 0.85 F prime C and section width of B section with the B. So I can plug the number in. So this is 1.67 inch squared. Where is this coming from, Bob? This is what we just calculated. This is what we just calculated. Plug them in and then multiply the yield strength of 60 KSI. I carry all the unit with me and divided by <laughs> 0 0.85. This is what it is here. And four KSI and width of the beam 12 inch is given. Okay, all right. So through this calculation, I got my A equal to a 2.46 inch, 2.46 inch. Okay, that is my effective compressive zone. So I want you to label here effective, okay? Effective compressive zone, not actual, not actual, so this is effective compressive zone. Okay, when we say effective, that's a windy stress block. That is a windy stress block. <clears throat> okay, so quickly, this is like the broken record, right? Again, again, we're repeating it again, again, so you can build the memory in your head. What we did, right? We start by using the design philosophy. VMN has to be greater than or equal to MU. Calculate the area of steel needed by approximating strength reduction factor 0.9 and the lever arm, DS minus half A, this is actually lever arm. And before you know it, this is actually the JD, right? JD and for approximate JD you go to 0.9 of DS, which is depth of the bars. And for lack of better knowledge, I have to approximate DS equal to 24 minus 2.5. And that is because one layer of bars, bring all these number in, get an estimate on AS, which is the total area needed for steel. And then I use AS, right? I use AS to back reversely calculate my effective compressive zone. And once I get my effective compressive zone, what I do? what I do, I bring it back again, because now I have effective compressive zone. I know, I know DS minus half A now, don't I? Is that right? Basically, this is JD. I know JD now, right? So why do I need to know JD? Because after I do this, I can iteratively check my reinforcement. Okay, so this is how. So use the same equation in the beginning. Now AS has to be greater than or equal to MU, MU divided by 0 0.5 FY, 
and this is ds minus half a. Now, it was before I approximated this one to be 0 0.9 ds, but not anymore in this step because I have my a already here. So I'm going to write it in the way that is 145 kip foot converted back to inches, 12 inch per foot. <clears throat> divided by phi, again, I'm assuming I have a verified phi yet. Assuming 0 0.9 multiplied 60 KSI, multiplied 60 KSI and multiplied 21.5 inch, and this is DS now. And mind you that this is still approximated, okay? Still approximate, but I can update my A now, and A is 2.46, 2.46 divided by two. All right, so with this, with this, my newly calculated AS equal to what? Has to be greater than or equal to 1.59 inch squared. And what happens here, folks? My AS has dropped from 1.67 <clears throat> to a 1.59 inch, okay? All right, but this is the corrected or iterated number and which we're going to rely on, okay? All right, so, Next step, I still got five more minutes, okay? So bear with me a little bit more, okay? So select the bars. <clears throat> After two rounds of iteration, I got my AS locked. This is how much I need it. I can now select the bars. So I have choices now, apparently. I have choices now. So first choice, I can do what? I can select number eight bars. So Bob, why number eight? Well, I love number eight, number nine, because they're just easy to compute and these are decent bar size you can use in the construction site, often used, right? And number A bar, each bar, I have an area of 0 0.79 inch squared. So if I say I provide maybe two number A bars, so I have what? AS provided will be equal to what? Two number A bars, so 2.79, two months by 0.79 inch squared, I got 1.58 inch squared. <coughs> 1.58 inch square. Now that is slightly less than, oh geez, whose mic is turned on? Okay, sorry about that. That is slightly less than 1.59 inch squared. But I think it's approximately the same. I think it's approximately the same. But I'm just gonna leave as, yeah, I feel unsafe about it, right? So how about I pick a number, number which is number nine bars? And I know for a fact number nine bars is gonna be bigger, right? Because I have one inch squared. And again, let's say two number nine bars. So two multiply one inch squared. I have two inch squared. And this number folks, it is much bigger than 1.59 inch squared. <clears throat> right? While you're watching and you look at this point, you say, Bob, it's a little bit confusing. You just got 1.58, that is, hair less than 1.59 and you just went on two inch squared and it's much larger than 1.59 inch squared. Why don't you jump in two, in two number nine to begin with? Because folks, remember we got 1.59 inch right here by approximation. We made a lot of compromises. We made a lot of compromises, okay? So this two inch square may be too much, okay? This two inch square may be too much. All right, I'll show you, okay, I'll show you. But anyway, so let's just say I use this option. <clears throat> okay, you know, I went on with two number nine bars, I'm happy with it, what's the next step? So now things start to change, right? Things start to change, why is that? We select the bar, so we compute. Why is that? Because now I have a section set I have the section set, well, so sorry, just a second. And this is 12 inch and the height is 24 inch. And we just said two number nine bars, right? Two number nine bars. So I'm gonna take a liberty. I say, you know what? I have here uh, one number nine, here another number nine. And from previous lecture, I know even if I have three number nine, my beam width is 10 inches, I'm fine. I'm fine. So I definitely can fit two number nine in the 12 inch beam, uh, plenty of space, right? So now, I also say, look, you assumed, right? You assume DS, remember? DS is 21.5 inch. 
And you told me that whatever left is a concrete cover, right? Concrete cover, CB, and there's what, 2.5 inch. And I can live with that. I can always look in my bar to make it up like that, right? So what I'm doing here is that now I no longer have a design problem, right? I have a, or I have an analysis problem because I have known section, I provide the bars. All I'm trying to find out is that with this given section, with this given design, how about my VMN check whether it's greater than or equal to MU? Okay, and we have talked about this in the previous lectures. All right, so it's a good point to pause, but I want you to take a step back and look at what we did, right? Essentially for a design problem, step one to four is just a way of estimating. So step one to four is the way, a way to estimate AS and that leads to, which leads to preliminary, preliminary arrangement for bars. Okay, that is what we did. And once that is done, and the step I'll show you five to seven for next lecture will be analyzed section like we did before. Okay, so step one to four, estimate how much bars you need, how much areas do you need, how many bars you need, and then you bring the bars to back to the geometry and you do analysis problem, find out whether your design capacity is bigger than your demand or not. Okay, all right. Well, folks, I'm done today. I'm gonna pause here. And if you have any question, remain on the line and we can discuss, okay? Otherwise, I'll see you on Wednesday. Thank you.